Muhammad Ali was born on January 17, 1942, Louisville, Kentucky. His birth name was Cassius Marcellus Clay, Jr. His father, Cassius Marcellus Clay, Sr., supported a wife and two sons by painting billboards and signs. His mother, Odessa Grady Clay, worked as a household domestic. At an early age, young Clay showed that he wasn't afraid of any bout, inside or outside of the ring. Growing up in the segregated South, he experienced racial prejudice and discrimination. At the age of 12, Clay discovered his talent for boxing through an odd twist of fate. After his bike was stolen... How did you come to take up boxing? I started about six years ago. My bicycle was stolen and my cousin was a boxer. And he told me that uh, he would train me. If I ever catch the guy that stole my bicycle, I could defend myself. Anyway, he took me to the gym and he quit later, but I kept it up. Did you catch the guy who stole your bike? No, I never did. You no. still looking for him? No, no, no. Clay told police officer Joe Martin that he wanted to beat up the thief. Well, you better learn how to fight before you start challenging people, Martin reportedly told him at the time. In addition to being a police officer, Martin also trained young boxers at a local gym. Clay attended mostly black public schools, including Central High School in Louisville from 1956 to 1960. He often daydreamed in class and shadowboxed in the halls, and his grades were so bad that some of his teachers wanted to hold him back from graduation. School's principal Atwood Wilson could see Clay's potential and opposed this, sarcastically asking the staff, do you think I'm going to be the principal of a school that Cassius Clay didn't finish? In the finals of the Golden Gloves Tournament in 1957, Clay outboxed Jimmy Jones and piles up the winning points. On May 20th, 1960, Ali Technical knocked out Alan Hudson in the pre-Olympic trial. Now it's time to turn the tables. There, Clay's in the Hudson and sends him really into the corner. Clay's arm is raised in victory, but Hudson. After advancing through the amateur ranks, Ali traveled to the 1960 Rome Olympic Games to compete in the light heavyweight division. Despite being only 18, he won all four of his fights easily. In the final, he defeated three-time European champion Sigzi Pietrusikowski to win the gold medal. The two fighters touch gloves as the fight is ready to begin. Cassius Clay of the United States comes out in the light trunks. Pietrusikowski of Poland is in dark. Cash is like lightning in there. Play has Pietrakowski missing badly, a tribute to his speed. Cassius looks very confident, and he's going right out after him. Good punching by both fighters. Yet Krakowski is very evasive. Cassius is a brilliant counterpuncher. A lightning right hand over a left jab has stopped many of his opponents. Both fighters weighed in at 178 pounds. There's the bell, ending round one. Pietrakowski comes out for round two. And Pietrakowski scores first. A good left by Pietrakowski. Must be careful with this KG Southpaw. Just five weeks ago, Clay established himself as the premier light heavyweight in the United States by knocking out Alan Hudson in the pre-Olympic trial. Just two days ago, Ziggy decision tough Guido Cerruti of Italy to qualify for the finals here today. Everyone at ringside predicted a very tough fight today, and it's turning out to be just that. Clay scoring with that right-hand lead. Dash is putting on the pressure. Clay piling up the points here in round two. There's the bell, ending round two. Clay looking very fresh here at the start of the third and final round. Cash is scoring well, and every once in a while, confusing Pietrakowski with a right lead.
In the quarterfinals of this competition, Clay won a decision over Gennady Shatkov of the Soviet Union. In the semifinals, Clay won a unanimous decision over rugged Tony Madigan of Australia. Pietrakowski comes on strong. Clay demonstrating those rapier-like punches. An avalanche of leather sends Pietrakowski into the ropes. He's covering up. Clay looking for a spot to end it all. But Ziggy comes back with a good combination. He's boxing with all the confidence in the world, realizing he is only moments away from the gold medal. And there's his famous shuffle. Play all over Pietrakowski. And there's the bell ending the fight. Cassius Clay, a very weary fighter, fights him. And then Ziggy's cornermen also acknowledge Clay's masterful boxing exhibition. So Clay won that battle and was awarded by a gold medal. Here in the award ceremony, the fighters take their places on the victory stand. Cassius Clay has presented the coveted gold medal for his tremendous victory in the light heavyweight division, a magnificent conclusion to the 1960 Rome Olympics. After his success, Ali began a professional career under the guidance of the Louisville Sponsoring Group. On 29 October 1960, Cassius Clay faced Tunney Hunsaker in a professional heavyweight boxing match. Occurring in front of 6,180 viewers at the Freedom Hall in Louisville, it was Clay's debut as a professional fighter. He had signed a six-year deal with 10 Louisville millionaires who would receive 50% of Clay's earnings. Tunney Hunsaker, a 30-year-old who was the Fayetteville, West Virginia police chief, had suffered a poor run of form, losing six consecutive fights including against then-world title contenders Tom McNeely and Ernie Terrell. His professional fight record was at 17-9-1 prior to this clash. Tony Hunsaker would become the first victim of the most charismatic athlete in the history of sports. Hunsaker recalled that Clay proved incredibly agile for his size, praising him as a heavyweight with the speed of a middleweight. Hunsaker harnessed a variety of maneuvers and techniques to try and unbalance the younger boxer. However, this only intensified Clay, enhancing his overall performance. From every position he was able to land blows without sustaining hits himself. The third round, several Clay blows inflicted a nosebleed, with Hunsaker suffering a cut to his right eye in the fourth. Despite the match's brutality, Hunsaker held on for all six rounds, sustaining swollen and near-shut eyes by the time the fight ended. Clay won all six rounds and achieved victory by a unanimous decision. Post-bout, Hunsaker predicted Clay would be a future world champion. Ali took home $2,000. After the heavyweight bout in front of a crowd of 6,180 viewers, Hunsaker, a 30-year-old police chief, who earned $300, said, he's awfully good for an 18-year-old and as fast as a middleweight. Clay signed an $18,000 contract to be managed by 10 Louisville businessmen following his punch-for-pay debut. Hunsaker meanwhile competed until a 10th-round knockout loss to Joe Shelton on 6 April 1962. He was left in a coma for nine days and suffered a brain hemorrhage, which required two subsequent brain operations, forcing Hunsaker to retire from the ring. His final boxing record was 18 wins, 15 losses, and 9 knockouts. Nevertheless, Hunsaker and Ali remained in touch. Ali turned up to join in retirement party with the celebrations for his old foe and good friend. They think that I am becoming overconfident, but I will never be so overconfident until it would interfere with my training program. I'm gunning for Floyd Patterson and Sonny Lister.